A very common reason folks come to see us is because of shoulder pain, and there are a number of different diagnoses that we could consider. Most often, patients want to know, do I have a rotator cuff tear? That's probably the most commonly recognized uh, injury that folks know about the shoulder. What we as physicians have to decide is whether uh, this is a rotator cuff tear, and if it is, how are we going to manage it? So first, in deciding whether this is a rotator cuff tear, we first listen to their symptoms, and often we hear common symptoms of night pain, which is often a rotator cuff symptom, uh, weakness, and then pain with certain motions around the shoulder. We then decide whether we think this is possibly a traumatic rotator cuff tear or a degenerative rotator cuff tear. If someone says my pain has been gradually worsening over the last couple years and now I have pain at night and I have weakness when I try to lift over my head, you start to think a degenerative rotator cuff tear. If someone says I fell and I dislocated my shoulder, I went to the emergency room, they popped it back into place and now on their exam they have weakness, I worry about a traumatic rotator cuff tear. I think this is relevant because it does affect how we're going to manage uh, these two separate types of injuries. So once we're thinking rotator cuff tear, the next step is to do a physical exam to try and determine if we truly think we are dealing with the rotator cuff tear. And often this is pain with certain motions and then we'll do some strength tests and if they have weakness on their physical exam that further supports the diagnosis of a rotator cuff tear. By far the most common uh, imaging modality that we use now is MRI to look to see if uh, someone does have a rotator cuff tear. Other options are ultrasound, uh, specialized uh, CT scans can help, uh, but if there's not a contraindication, most folks will end up with an MRI, and that'll help tell us the extent of their rotator cuff tear. This can range from a partial thickness tear to a complete tear, and it can be a small tear to a large tear. And that's where it becomes important in terms of how we're going to manage this injury, and that's why it's important to see someone who has extensive experience in order to help determine what is the best strategy based on the type of tear since not all tears are the same. For that individual who is having night pain, having weakness, and is not responding to conservative treatment, that is the individual that is likely uh, going to need to think about doing surgery to fix their rotator cuff tear. In another video, Morgan O'Claire gave a great overview on non-operative management of rotator cuff injuries, and a significant number of rotator cuff injuries can get better with conservative treatment. For those that don't, then it's time to consider fixing these. The vast majority of the time, we start off with an arthroscopic procedure where we make a small little uh, incision in the back of the shoulder and put a camera in so that we can then evaluate the shoulder. There are often other injuries associated with rotator cuff tears, including labrum injuries, uh, arthritis, bursitis, and uh, some injuries at the AC joint or acromioclavicular joint. So we first do a diagnostic arthroscopy and that allows us to figure out exactly what we're dealing with to confirm that the MRI was accurate in showing us exactly the type of injury you have. And if it does, then usually we can make a couple more small uh, incisions around the shoulder and we can repair your rotator cuff through those small incisions uh, to reattach the tendon back to bone. And then, uh, we can usually successfully manage some other uh, issues in the shoulder, such as labrum pathology, uh, biceps pathology, AC joint arthritis, and uh, bursitis related to this condition called impingement. And all of that can be addressed usually arthroscopically. In some cases, in a very large tear, or if the tear is retracted, uh, we might have to make a, a small incision near the front of the shoulder uh, in order to go down and actually mobilize the tissue. And at that point, it becomes a little bit more invasive than an arthroscopic procedure. But the outcomes tell us that they are the same, whether you can do this just through some poke holes or whether you have to make a small incision. And that outcome is often improved strength, decreased pain, and overall better function.
most patients can get just about fully better from this and some of that depends on how big the tear was at the beginning of treatment but for the majority of tears if we either non-operatively or operatively manage these we can get folks back doing what they want to do a practice that sees a number of patients with rotator cuff injuries is going to have a better success rate of determining who is going to get better with uh, non-operative treatment and who may need to consider uh, surgery and then for the folks that do need surgery obviously you want to go somewhere where you the practice has extensive experience with that surgical procedure and also has experience with physical therapists that know how to rehab a shoulder, uh, especially after rotator cuff repair.